Great Lakes Prepping here. One of my most viewed videos is actually a video that I made quite a few years ago, and it's all about storing rice in mason jars using a vacuum sealer. Now, while this remains, in my opinion, the superior method for storing rice for very long term, there can be some challenges in doing so. One, mason jars. You need a lot of mason jars, and these days, a lot of mason jars can be hard to come by, not to mention mason jar lids. And two, you do need to have a vacuum sealer with a jar attachment, which of course is an expense. And again, some of those things are hard to find these days. And while it may not be my number one preferred method, in this video, I want to show you another very good way for storing rice or other dry ingredients for very long term using mylar bags, oxygen absorbers, and five gallon buckets. So here we have two 25 pound bags of long grain rice. I got a pretty good price on these at Sam's Club. Usually that's where I would find uh, my big bags of rice, either Sam's Club or Costco. And I wanna take all this rice out of these bags that they came in and seal them up in something so they can last for an uh, incredibly long time in my pantry. Now we will be putting all this rice into mylar bags, but just like I did when I made my mason jar rice storing video, and just like I do when I'm vacuum sealing any sort of grains for long-term storage, the very first step that I'm actually going to do is freeze the rice. There's a small chance that there's, you know, any manner of insect eggs or microscopic larvae already in this rice. And I want to make sure to sort of kill it before it ever has a chance, be it months from now or years from now, to uh, somehow infest my rice. So the way that I take care of that is by freezing all of it. And the way I do that is to pour the rice directly into food grade five gallon buckets, seal those buckets up and stick the entire bucket into the freezer. And I'll leave it there for a solid two days and then I'll take it back out of the freezer and let it come back down to room temperature. And by the way, this is a question I get maybe more than any other question on the other rice sealing video I made, and that's after you freeze it, do you have to worry about condensation? And the answer is yes, which is exactly why I don't open those sealed five gallon buckets until I know that that rice has come entirely back down to room temperature because I don't want moisture and humidity in the air to cling to the freezing cold rice, and then I'm gonna have a problem with moist rice forever. So it's really going to be a, probably a good three days from starting to freeze the rice to when it's completely sort of warmed back up to the point where I can move on to the next step and start sealing it. So now I'm going to just sort of jump ahead in time a few days and get to the part where we start putting these in the mylar bags. Now there's two main ways that you can choose to seal up your rice to store in five gallon buckets. And the first is to use one of these great big five gallon sized mylar bags. We put the bag in the bucket, we fill it up with the rice, oxygen absorbers, and seal it up. That's the most quick, efficient, and maybe cost effective way to seal up a lot of rice all at once. Of course, the major drawback of that is that when you need to access some rice, you have to break that seal, and now you've sort of exposed your entire five gallons of rice back to the air, and uh, you kind of have to redo the whole sealing and new oxygen absorbers and the whole thing. So if you've got a large family or a lot of people to feed and you think you can go through five gallons of rice in a, I don't know, shorter amount of time, be it a couple months or something like that, then this is the way to go. And before I move on and talk about the other option, let's talk real quick about sort of why this is a good method of storing rice and what the different pieces are sort of doing. Basically, you could store your rice directly in a food grade five gallon bucket, put the rice in, throw oxygen absorbers in, and then put the lid on. And these lids do have a rubber gasket and they're designed to be watertight because, you know, these were sort of invented for storing things like pickles and paint, things that you wouldn't want to leak. But over a very long period of time, that seal can fail and there's other problems you can face with doing it that way. So that's why we use the Mylar bag. Mylar is superior for staying airtight and watertight, keeping sealed. It's opaque, so there's no way any light's getting into that even if the bucket was opened. So the basic principles of this whole method is that the Mylar bag protects your food and the rigid five gallon bucket protects the bag. The bag will keep out light and air and moisture and the bucket will keep out pests and bugs and rodents and just kind of give you a more rigid stackable option for storing these bags of rice. 
So option one, the great big five gallon Mylar bag. And option two, which is much better for my particular needs, and that's to use a bunch of smaller Mylar bags. The principle still applies. The bag protects your food, the bucket protects the bags. Except in this case, instead of one giant bag filling up this entire bucket, we're gonna have a bunch of these, in my case, quart size bags, uh, just sort of stacked up in the bucket. So I can pop open that bucket and grab about a quart's worth of the dried rice or whatever else I'm storing, pop the lid back on the bucket, and I'm good to go. I haven't affected any of the other rice that I'm not ready to use yet. The whole thing's super simple. These Mylar bags are pretty easy to use. You just need to do a couple things to make sure that it's done right. And we're gonna walk through uh, all of it with both the smaller quart Mylar bags and the great big five gallon bag. All right, let's start with the great big five gallon bag. So here I've got my bucket of rice that has been frozen and then completely thawed back out and we're ready to put it in, in the Mylar. Now, the easiest way I've found to do this is to first sort of line the bucket with your giant bag as best you can. Now, I'm gonna have to take this bag back out of the bucket in order to seal it. But for now, for ease of filling it, I'm just gonna kinda loosely stick it in the bucket so I can start pouring rice into it. Now it's important that you don't try to go all the way to the very top of that bucket or bag. You need a little bit of room to close that bag up and seal it. So I'm gonna put as much in as I can while leaving enough room to work with. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so I've pulled the five gallon bag of rice back out of that bucket, and now it's time to add some oxygen absorbers and uh, seal this thing up. And let's talk real quick about oxygen absorbers. Now, they come in different sizes, and the sort of capacity for how much oxygen they can absorb tends to be measured in cubic centimeters. Now, for a big five gallon bag like this, the sort of recommended amount of oxygen absorbers to use is 2,000 cubic centimeters. And I've got some 1,000 cubic centimeter oxygen absorbers here, so I'm gonna throw two of these in. Now when we do these smaller quart bags of rice, obviously we can use much smaller oxygen absorbers for that. And I've actually got some 200 cubic centimeter absorbers that we'll use for that. But for now, we're gonna go with the two 1,000 cubic centimeter. So once I take them out of their little package that they come in, they're gonna start absorbing oxygen. So I wanna do the next couple of steps pretty quick after I do that. Now I've got this bag sort of laid out on the counter on its side and of course you can see I've got my little ironing board here. And the way that we're gonna seal this up is by using an ordinary clothing iron. But because I do have a lot of empty space still in this bag, I wouldn't mind getting rid of some of that. So I'm actually gonna use a vacuum to take a lot of that air out. But before I do that, I'm gonna seal most of the bag up, leaving just enough where I can kind of fit the wand of the vacuum cleaner in there. And so kind of pressing this bag as flat as possible. I'm just gonna start ironing it near the end and the iron's gonna melt it just enough to kind of close it together and seal it. Now they make machines to do this exact sort of thing, but the clothes iron works great for it if you don't wanna spend the money on a sort of a purpose-built machine and it doesn't hurt or damage the iron at all. I've actually used this iron probably for 90% Mylar bags and 10% clothes in the years that I've owned it. And it doesn't do anything to the iron. There's no sort of discoloration or melted stuff on it, nothing. It's perfectly fine. And I will say that you obviously don't wanna use any kind of steam or water in the iron. And I've got it set to just a little bit higher than medium. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but I've got it on the silk setting. Just kind of a good medium heat. Now I'll just kind of rub it back and forth, sort of slowly over the Mylar bag until it's uh, totally sealed together. And now we're gonna use the vacuum and suck some of that excess air out of there. And I like to use the crevice attachment because it's about the narrowest attachment that I can put onto this vacuum. I'm just gonna put it in there in the little opening here 
turn the vacuum on for just a moment. And right away, I'm gonna seal up that little opening with the iron and get it nice and closed up. And there we have it, that's all there is to it. Now because I used that vacuum cleaner, this really does have the appearance of being vacuum sealed. It's, I'm sure it's not 100% vacuum sealed, but it's pretty darn close. But here's the thing, it doesn't really have to be 100% vacuum sealed because we're using those oxygen absorbers. In fact, unless you use the vacuum cleaner like I just did, when you put oxygen absorbers into a Mylar bag and seal it shut, that bag is not going to collapse and sort of suck inward to have the appearance of a vacuum sealed bag. That's not really what oxygen absorbers do. They only absorb O2, just the oxygen component of the overall composition of the ambient air. In fact, the air that we live and breathe in is really comprised only about 20% of actual oxygen and 80% of it is all the other stuff. So your bag can still be full of that other 80% of stuff that's not going to harm your food, but it may give your bag the appearance of it not being vacuum sealed the way you might expect. That's totally normal. And again, this bag only has that appearance because I used a vacuum cleaner. And now I just need to put this big old bag back into the bucket. Just sort of squish it and ply it into whatever shape you need to get into that bucket. And all this excess that's sticking out, I could have trimmed a little bit of this off, but it doesn't hurt anything. It just gives me more surface area to seal, which I like. And it's perfectly okay to kind of fold it, even if it's crimped a little, jam it down into that bucket. And now it's ready for the lid. There's one thing I'll talk about before moving on to the quart size bags, and that's desiccant packs. Sometimes people ask me, do you need to put those little desiccant packs into your bags or jars of rice? And the answer is generally no. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's those little teeny packets that you might uh, see in a lot of consumer goods, or they might come in the pockets of clothes that you've bought, and they basically exist to absorb moisture. But for this, for storing goods that are already completely dry, the way we're doing it, it's just really not necessary. If you want to throw some in there to make yourself sort of feel better, a little extra peace of mind, then have at it. But for me, I don't really waste my money on them. And as soon as you open them, they're going to start trying to sort of absorb ambient humidity and, and you're going to kind of, they have a short shelf life really. So I just don't find them worth using. And now all I need to do is go ahead and label my bucket with the date. All right, next let's do some of our quart bags. Now you could use half gallon size, gallon, quart. This is a pretty good amount for me, so that's the size I like. Now just to make this a little easier, I'm gonna use my canning funnel just to kind of jam in the end of the bag and make it easier for me to fill these up. And this gets a little tedious when you gotta do a million of them. But that's okay. Now again, I need to leave enough room in there to cinch this bag closed. And this, these bags actually come with a little Ziploc end, which makes it a little convenient to, uh, to close up until I can seal it. Now, unlike the giant five gallon bags, I'm not gonna try to use my vacuum on this because these bags are just so small, there's not gonna be a lot of air left in it anyway, and there's not gonna be enough room for that vacuum wand to get in there without just immediately starting to suck rice up into it. So the oxygen absorbers I'm gonna use for this are actually 200 cubic centimeter oxygen absorbers. They came with this particular set of uh, quart mylar bags that I bought, so that's pretty convenient. And I'm only gonna use one of these per small bag and that's gonna work out just fine. Now again, once I cut this bag open, I wanna work kinda of quickly so I'm not wasting a bunch of my uh, you know, oxygen absorbing ability on just the ambient air. So I'll start to move pretty quickly once I take the first oxygen absorber out of this. Just right into the bag. And we seal the little Ziploc end. If I didn't have the little Ziploc feature on these bags, I'd have to go right to the iron step. But again, not a big deal, super easy. But since I do have the Ziploc thing, and I don't wanna waste those oxygen absorbers, I'm just gonna go ahead and Ziploc them for now and go through all the bags until I fill all my rice up. All right, now just like we did with that five gallon bag, but 
a lot easier and more convenient, we're gonna iron the edge of this Mylar bag and seal it up. And I just have to sort of tilt the bag up to make sure that that edge lays pretty flat. And I can start sealing it. All right, so here we've got all of our quart size Mylar bags sealed up and ready to go. For just under five gallons of that uh, rice, I got 13 quart bags out of it. That's pretty good. So now all I have to do is label each one of my bags with the date. And I could also label the bags with what's in them, but I don't think I'll have any problem remembering what's in these. And now we're just putting them in the bucket. Get them in there any which way you can fit them to make the most out of the space you have. And there we are. I call that a five gallon bucket full of rice. That's ready for the pantry. So there you have it. That's how to store lots and lots of rice in Mylar bags using oxygen absorbers, Mylar bags, five gallon buckets, and an ordinary household iron. Now I have 50 pounds more rice to go ahead and close up and put in the pantry, and I can count on it being just as fresh as it is today for years to come. That's it for now. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all our latest stuff, including future food preservation videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.